Hello. Okay. Uh, first of all, a very big uh, thanks to the organizers for inviting IDN down to share our perspective. Uh, I do have to give you a heads up that uh, you will find very little Python you know, <laughs> spread across the slides here. Uh, you, you, may, you may see this as uh, educational, uh, de depends, uh, but uh, what I can say that is uh, if you are keen to get your students or you are keen to find out about the a lot of MOE schools are trying to scale up the computer clubs in, in, in their schools, uh, we provided a certain amount of grant to the schools uh, you know, to boost up the hardware, software, as well as uh, training. Uh, we, at the point of time, we were also talking to a lot of partners, you know, science center, MNCs, training providers, uh, to come up with fun activities for the students. You know, some of you might have remembered uh, the iSpace exhibit in, in science center. So uh, all in all, we try to create a very you know, healthy ecosystem to um, help the schools level up the capabilities of the uh, CCA. Um, in, in the grand scheme of things, you know, we have so many things happening, um, workshops and things like that, trying to get everybody to learn how to code, you know, to do some IT stuff. Uh, if you were to you know, plot everything down in this uh, pyramid here. Uh, so, so do take note that this is uh, not the academic side of things that Dr. Mui mentioned, this is more of the uh, you know, fun enrichment kind of thing. So um, if the apex is where you know, the student is really pretty accomplished in his ICT skills, uh, we will see, you know, at a base uh, consisting of activities whereby we are you know, trying to excite the kids, we are trying to, you know, come up with a short workshop to get them to code, uh, you know, the code for fun uh, activities that Dr. Mui mentioned, you know, we will sit very well here. At the top of things uh, is where students put in the extra effort um, to train themselves hard for competitions, uh, they might receive special mentorship from uh, you know, one to one kind of trainers, or they may be, you know, be part of some elite group that we we don't even know about whereby right, they are trained specially you know, to, to be better at what they're doing. Um, the Infocom clubs uh, and the program sits somewhere in the middle whereby we will harness all the students who are interested, excited about technology to go to make the you know the decision to want to go one step further during their primary school days, their secondary school or even their JC days to be part of this CCA. Um, you know, one interesting uh, thing that we've been tracking so far is you know, we, we often ask the students within our community how popular is the CCA? So I think back then in 2010, we have heard stories whereby you know, the Infocom club or the computer club is some place where if you have no CCA, you are thrown there. Okay? Or you know, we, we choose the CCA so that we can go there and play games, you know, things like that. But increasingly, uh, you know, the, the popularity has sort of grown. Uh, now we are hearing stories whereby uh, to actually enter the Infocom club, you have to go through some uh, interviews by the teachers, they will show some sort of portfolio. So I think things are improving slightly. Um, Sometimes to say more and more students uh, are getting more interested in tech in general and they want to be part of a CCA that develops them further. So um, where are we right now? Um, the, the close community that, that the, the community that we, we are closer with is about 200 schools uh, spread, you know, roughly half of them being the secondary school cohort, the other half being the primary schools, the JCs and the high schools. In terms of uh, student numbers, and that, that's out of the total universe of about 360 MOE schools. Um, there are a lot of MO, other MOE schools that also have a Infocom club, but I think they are pretty confident to do it themselves and they are not resting within our uh, IDA managed community. So uh, we have about 7,500 students uh, all in all. Um, and if you look at the kind of training that the, student, the schools are providing for the students, you will see that the uh, overwhelming majority are training in the areas of digital photography, you know, animation, videography. It doesn't add up to 100 because uh, some schools may be doing a couple of uh, different areas. So we, we have sort of known this um, somewhat all along. Uh, the, the survey that we did sort of validates the fact. Um, and uh, it, it raises a bit of a concern because when we talk to students, when we did surveys with them, uh, interestingly, the the top three areas that they have often expressed that they want to be trained in is you know, your games development, they want to be they want to know how to build their mobile apps, you know, things like that. Um, still a bit puzzled about number three, you know, um, they, they are thinking of security and networking. Uh, I think they, when they when they say that they may be thinking more along the lines of like cyber wellness. I know MOE is pushing very hard in terms of like, cyber wellness kind of things. But but the first two uh, resonates very well with the kind of anecdotal um, responses that we get when we interact with the students. Um, so, you know, we, we talk about it, you know, what are we actually up against? Uh, what is a situation like this? Um, we, we, we know that there are very high profile digital media related competitions out there, you know, your animation, your SDMA, which is run by MOE. 
Um, there's nothing wrong with these competitions. Uh, in fact, they are, they are doing what they're supposed to do and they're doing it very successfully. Okay? But what, what it shows us is that you know, if we want to shift the, the kind of training that the schools subscribe to, um, having a very good, well-run competition uh, makes a big difference. Okay? And uh, CC, schools tend to have only time for a few competitions. So if the schools were to rally around a particular area of competition, uh, that would be very, very helpful. Um, when we spoke to the teachers that we have within the community, we realized that uh, actually only about half of them have some sort of ICT background, for formal background. So I think when they answered this, um, even the teachers who might have some engineering background will say that they have some sort of background. So with these kind of numbers, uh, we have to expect that you know, not all of them will gravitate very, very well to you know, when we say we're going to do coding, you know, all the teachers are like, yes, let's get a class to do it. So there will be a lot of teachers who will then gravitate more to uh, areas that are a bit more fun, more visible, like a digital media related kind of things. Like. Um, and, and this is where there's also a bit of a vicious cycle. If there's a low demand, you know, when schools call for their IDQs when they do procurement, they are not saying that we want training in you know, coding related areas and we are doing uh, digital media related training. Uh, naturally, the market will sort of respond and you know, let us do more and more digital media related courses. So, uh, and, and that's not to mention that you know every school will run events. Every school, when they run events, they need photographers, they need people to edit the photos, they need people to take videos. So it, it, it is very natural for me to, to, to understand that uh, it makes a lot more sense for schools to want to invest in, in that area that, that we see there. So uh, we, we, we sat down and you know, we talked hard about it. You know, we were working with uh, partners like MOE and we, we, we said that uh, you know, things have, has got to change a bit. Uh, it has to balance out a bit more. Um, so since last year, we have launched what we call the Code and SG uh, movement, you know, the Code for Fun, you know, being part of it, whereby we're going down to schools to do enrichment programs. Um, you might have heard of the Code for Charity event that we do at all the polis. Uh, but uh, even the Ecocom Club program underwent uh, somewhat like a total revision um, to be more aligned to this. So right now, uh, we have called four keys sort of trust, you know, strategies and areas that we are looking at. Uh, firstly, we are going to intervene very, very um, uh, closely in the school's info club training. Uh, we are going to build the tools, we are going to give the, the, the teachers and the students a platform whereby they can um, uh, learn more about IT uh, in a very fun way. Um, the, community, the whole community is only as, as healthy and as strong as the level of engagement that they have there. So we are also spending a bit of extra efforts there to uh, make sure that we have um, you know, sub communities within the overall Infocom Club program whereby you know, students who are interested in mobile development can find like minded people in the whole community rather than just their schools. Uh, and of course, we want to end the year off with a relatively big bang event whereby we can all celebrate tech, uh, we can recognize outstanding teachers, we can uh, recognize talented students as well. Okay. So, let, let's talk a bit more about uh, training. Um, we have worked out this thing called the ICT Learning Roadmap together with academics from the five uh, polytechnics. So uh, a big thanks to them as well. Um, so what this roadmap does is that it provides a guide for teachers and students. You know, if they want to learn more about IT, if they want to see themselves progress, they have a sort of a guided framework on how to proceed. Part of the ICT Learning Roadmap will be the core area, uh, whereby you can find um, activities that will help students uh, appreciate technology better. So it can come in the form of maybe you know, just simply watching a video about the evolution of technology um, to something more hands-on whereby they're learning how to code uh, using some online platforms of that, for example, Code Combat. Okay? Um, there's this other part, uh, which is, um, you know, we have actually charted out eight different roles that uh, to help the teachers and uh, to, to sort of anchor their training a bit better. Uh, and they are spread out across the four uh, domains that we see there. So these are the four areas that we are pushing very, very, very hard for. Um, using one of them as an example, you know, Web Developer Junior, what the teachers and the students will see there is that uh, there are five different levels. Okay? Uh, level one being the simplest one whereby you, know, you are just building a rest kind of website. Um, and as they progress, you know, eventually they'll be doing something like you know, building a, a real web application that pulls and sends data to the server. Okay. So any student who reaches your level 5 will probably be in a, in a pretty good position when they enter uh, or tertiary kind of education um, you know, to, to be able to accelerate much faster. 
So uh, we also make some sort of recommendations. So if you are upper primary school students, so this is roughly where uh, you can aim to be. Of course, this is just a rough guide. You know, every school is very different. The, the caliber of the students are different as well. Um, so uh, one intention is that uh, teachers can actually use the guide to do training themselves. Uh, or the teachers can use the guide to uh, better engage with training providers out there and say that you know I want uh, you to provide me with a course that can meet the level 3 competency or something like that. Uh, but of course we know that that's not going to happen for all the schools. Uh, some teachers may have the will to do it but they don't really have the, 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 the means or the, the time to do it. So what we have done is we have also partnered with uh, 10 different training vendors. Uh, I don't know whether some of them are, are here today. Uh, rolling out a total of 63 courses spread across all the different domains. Okay, so what happens here is that you know uh, maybe this vendor ACB can be coming in to provide uh, courses for web development uh, using maybe Google Site, you know Dreamweaver, things like that. Uh, Alchemy can come in to provide training on mobile, uh, and we are talking about you know um, the easier ones like using Game Salad as well as the more uh, industry standard kind of things like using Xcode. So this is not all just play play, you know, the tools that the students will be using are pretty industry relevant. Um, tinker Tanker, they could be coming in with courses that get students to you know, tinker with Arduino sets, uh, learning scratch as well, you know, things like that. Okay. So all in all, as I mentioned, there's 63 courses for teachers to choose from. Okay. So uh, teachers are, are not, uh, teachers who, who may not have the time you know, to, to really structure you know, and, and Try to work out a curriculum for their own students can easily just tap on this uh, to roll out training for the Google class as well as the robotics class. Uh, so what the courses do is that uh, we have already worked out with the vendors the standard sets of uh, courses at the newbie level. Um, any teacher, any school that subscribes to it um, can easily have the confidence that you know this course will meet the level two competencies that you see. Uh, he or she will have the confidence that you know uh, the pace of the course will be. Uh, slightly slower to cater for the younger learners. The tools that they're using will be uh, easier to learn uh, and use as well. And we try not to cram too much theories, no things like that. Uh, it's 12 sessions of two hours as well, so that it sits uh, hopefully very well with the CCA kind of a schedule for schools. At the other extreme, we will have the advanced courses that are designed to meet the level five, you know, the, the toughest level of each uh, roadmap. Um, you can expect that the pace will be faster, they learn more uh, fundamental theories. Uh, the tools that they are using are also a bit more industry kind of standard. Although they may not use the entire set of tools, uh, but this skill set will be uh, very good in their portfolio eventually when they learn uh, at the tertiary level of education. Um, and anywhere in between, you know, you will have the beginner course meeting a level 3, uh, as well as the intermediate course meeting a level 4. So uh, we have designed this to be pretty much plug and play for the uh, teachers who are running CCAs in schools. Uh, so if you are currently an Infocom Club teacher, um, you haven't heard of this before, feel free to have a chat with me after, after this. Okay, so uh, we started this uh, back in uh, January this year. Um, quite happy to share that you know, right now we have actually reached out to about 79 schools from January to May and benefiting more than 2,000 students who are really being trained in areas that is very closely related to coding if not computational thinking kind of skills. Um, and there's another 15 schools in the pipeline uh, for this month that I haven't added into this chart as well. And you can see that you know, um, web developer, uh, game developer and mobile developer, these are the, 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 the more popular causes that the schools are choosing as well. Um, I also mentioned about you know, us building the tools for teachers and the students uh, to be you know, better connected within the community. So one of the projects that we are working on right now is to build this online engagement platform. Uh, you can think of it like a personal space which the students uh, can log into. Uh, it's a very gamified environment for them to learn more about IT. Um, so um, as they you know, learn, learn more, as they progress in the, in the, in the courses, uh, it's a very gamified um, kind of uh, environment here, so they will level up, they may uh, they will gain experience, they level up, they may earn digital badges, uh, achievements, which may then translate to some tangible stuff in uh, real life. Okay, we haven't decided on that yet. Um, and you can think of this like, uh, you know, uh, it, it will act as a very good repository of the students' uh, achievements, their learnings. So that eventually when they're going on to apply for direct school admissions with secondary schools or maybe a direct poly admissions from the polys, uh, this will come in handy as well. Um, so 
uh, and really the, the, the big objective here is that you know rather than seeing all the info 7,000 plus Infocom Club students as just uh, names uh, and, and numbers, we really want to go one step further through the platform knowing whether you know is this student very, very active in the whole community? Um, is he very, very well trained in all the various aspects of uh, IT? And is he actually a, a very talented student that we have uh, yet to discover? Okay? And um, with all this information, of course, then we can you know, elevate or, or talent spot some of these students um, to eventually become some of our ambassadors. And these guys will in turn go back to the community and maybe lead some of the sub uh, interest groups within it. Okay, so so that, that's really the big plan uh, behind it. Um, and all in all, you know, if we uh, were to do you know, all these things right, um, the way we are seeing it is that um, at, at the heart of things, there will be an online engagement platform which all the students uh, and teachers can actually connect to. It will be a very uh, safe space for them to discuss, collaborate, uh, and as well as to you know, progress more in IT. Um, the ICT learning roadmap will, will, will anchor very deeply within here. So the core activities, the fun stuff, uh, the students can actually easily uh, access it through this portal. Uh, it also gives a more common language, you know, when we're talking about training, when we're talking about different uh, expertise level, they, they, they somewhat have uh, a particular kind of a framework to map themselves to. And, um, Hopefully, out of this whole community, we can then get some uh, students who will move on um, you know, to compete. Uh, of course, we don't expect all Infocom Club students to be able to do that. I, I don't think everybody should be that competitive. Uh, but at least a healthy percentage of these students will want to go you know, one step further, take part in the competition, uh, maybe win some glory for their schools as well. Uh, and you know, we will have to make sure that these competitions reward them adequately, um, as well as uh, you know, provide them uh, a means to sort of bring prestige back, you know, make everybody feel good that the time they invested in this is really well spent. And this is where I'm going to spend you know, the, the, the next few minutes talking about this National Infocom competition which uh, we have tried to support and then set up. So earlier on I mentioned about these other competitions uh, that are very, very successful, you know, they, this uh, like animation, I think they send the winners overseas. So um, they have a very huge, uh, strong community following them as well. So we're trying to recreate this with the National Infocom competition as well, so that uh, schools see a lot of value in getting their students to also go for, let's say, a mobile app development competition. So uh, the way we're doing it, uh, actually starting from last year, and, and definitely more pronounced this year is that uh, from January to September uh, there will be a series of competitions that are happening. In fact, some have already happened uh, for this year, which IDA is actively supporting. Some of these competitions will actually lead on to an overseas uh, competition whereby the students know that they are actually you know, representing Singapore, so there's a certain sense of uh, prestige to it as well. Uh, so, I mean, so far we have done one for the first Lego League whereby we send the school to, uh, to US. Um, and you know, moving on, uh, there will be a couple more. Um, what's a bit more unique is that uh, in September, I also mentioned about this uh, Big Bang event at the end of the year, every year. So this is, uh, we have currently called it the Young Tech Fest. It will happen um, during the 10th to 12th of September. So uh, in, together with this event, we are going to run a series of what we call the NIC phase of competition. Okay. So you can see this as like you know the the, the really the, the, the ultimate kind of competitions at the national level. Uh, one of which is uh, NIC based off in the areas of app development. So how we are doing this is that we will then be selecting champion teams um, back then you know in January to September across various competitions. For example, SP has this uh, national software competition, so we'll be picking um, you know, outstanding teams from there and uh, seeding them into this NIC phase of that will happen uh, during the Young Tech Fest. So uh, the champion of the champions will then move on to represent Singapore for this uh, regional competition called APECTA. Okay? Um, so again, we're, we're trying to create a, a, a better sense of prestige here. You know, I'm taking part in an IT competition and I get to represent Singapore you know, for an even higher level of competition. And not just in the areas of app development, um, we're also looking at uh, and NIC based off in data analytics. So you might have heard of this Young Thinkers Challenge that we are collaborating with uh, SAP. Uh, I think the registration should be closing or already closed. If you are keen you know, to take part in that, please uh, 
let me know as well. Um, I just want to do a very special shout out for this NIC phase of encoding. Okay, so I, I think in the past um, we, we have done coding related kind of competitions like mobile development, uh, hackathon, and you know, things like that. Uh, but right now, what we're trying to do is really to formalize a, a competition really, really around coding, okay? especially for coding. Um, very happy that we are working with uh, Prof. Chris Bosch from SMU uh, on this. Um, the intent is that um, you know, it's going to be called Ace of Coders. We haven't formally announced it yet, so this is just a, a heads up. Um, we are trying to make coding somewhat like an eSports. So um, there will be teams of uh, competitors coming on board, you know, they are coding the AI for some game characters, and uh, the audience may not even know that they are, they are, they are watching a coding competition where they are actually watching the, how the codes actually manifest into a game. Okay. So, um, and you know, we want this event to happen at a very public place, you know, watched by you know, tons of audience, just like how you see uh, eSports happening in other uh, countries as well. So, uh, I think to end off, I'm going to show you a video of uh, how we have done something similar back in March in uh, SMU. Okay? Uh, actually, what you saw in the video is, is uh, this 
uh, Thailand that we did. So uh, we are trying to recreate this uh, in September again. So I'm hoping that all secondary schools and uh, JCs can uh, actively participate in this as well. Okay. Uh, if there are any questions, you can catch me at the tea break or they also email me as well. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Joseph.